What's up, everybody? Welcome to Wednesday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. It means one thing. It's Let's Play Threat Gen Red vs. Blue. I'm your host, Gerald Dozier, along with Clint Bow Dungeon, who's back in the house. We are going to be playing through the Threat Gen Red vs. Blue cybersecurity simulation gamification platform, and we are going to be operating as the Blue Team Defenders today. We will be the Chief Information Security Officer, the Security Operations Center Analyst, and the Incident Responders if we need to go that route for a pipeline mid-size organization industrial control systems will be there it infrastructure will be there you will be there we will be there i will be operating and piloting telling you how i would approach and then actually showing you how would i approach implementing security controls in a logical orderly fashion based on highest risk reduction budget amount of resources it takes to operate being a CISO is a complicated situation. Today, we're going to break it down through the simulation. I hope you can join us. Stay tuned. What's up, Clint Bow Dungeon? Welcome back into the seat. How are you doing, man? It's been a What's minute. Up, man? Yeah, it's good to be back. You know, just a lot of stuff going on, you know, a lot of travel, moving homes, moving my studio. Uh, but, you know, I'm finally settled in, ready to get back in. And also, uh, at some point today, probably about either an hour or whenever you want or later on after the video, make some announcements on some kind of uh, on, a, on a couple special uh, streams that we have coming up for the end of the year. Oh, very nice. So stay tuned, stick with us, and get some little uh, surprise drops there at the end. I want to say what's up to some of our regulars here. Alex Goodwin, Carrie, James Driscoll, DJ Bsec in the house. Exactly. Uh, being a sister is trying to figure out the best you can do with budget or without a budget, right? Haircut Fish in the house. Dan Reardon, happy holidays to all of you. I'm really looking forward to jumping in to today's stream. Clint, what do you say we get going and start Let's boogieing go. and partying? Let's go. And I know that uh, I got a little little tribute here to Alex Goodwin. He's probably saying return of Hatman, not return of Clint. So there you go, Alex. I love it. All right. Hey, what's up, Jack Scott? Good to see you. Philip Martin, good to see you. I'm going to pull up the stream right now and get ready to rock and roll, Clint. Here we go. All right. Got some hip hop music to play. This is the Threat Gen Red versus Blue platform. If you're interested in checking it out yourself, I want to point out that you can go to threatgen.com right here at the bottom threatgen.com in the blue or right here available at threatgen.com now clint are we running a special right now can yep, we sure are. Yeah. um i'll get that uh i'll put that up here in a minute oh, okay so yep. there's a code uh clint's gonna drop it in there i'm gonna start playing let's do it chat feel free to engage uh call call shenanigans on my gameplay or uh, offer suggestions we're all about it we're gonna go ahead and do single player play as the blue team Pipeline is a mid-size environment with ICS in the form of SCADA and distributed control systems. This is the intro that you see when you start Threat Gen's Red vs. Blue. The key takeaway here is that you can win the game by achieving any of the following conditions. Eliminating all vulnerabilities. The all-clear win. Very difficult. Increasing your threat intelligence score to 100% or outlasting the red team when the turn expires. Let's go ahead and start the game. This one, this will be a one hour stream, so you can set your clock to that. Here we go to start off. We've got $50,000, three of three resources, or five, you know, risk analysts on my team, security engineers. This is my environment. The green indicates the network um, yeah, groupings, so there is only one group. And here is our dear friend, Carl, <gasps> operating in the, uh, <laughs> in the remote user space. So our action tree shows us all potential actions that we can take. Over here on the left is a kind of a shortcut of actions we can take. I'm going to go ahead and drop a gateway firewall into the environment. And because I'm a CISO, you know, best practices, if we're using CIS um, 20 or CIS 18, as it's called now, uh, getting an inventory really is quite important. So we're going to go ahead and do asset inventory. And I want to also, so under CIS, which I do enjoy, or NIST Cybersecurity Framework, which I love, I heart NIST, get the emotes of your here squad members. Um, you want to do identify and protect kind of first, right? That's kind of like a key thing. So I am going to do, um, 
I don't really want to do policies and procedures right now because we do need to get into two-factor auth uh, and IR procedures, but I feel like installing a SIM and getting some visibility is very important. So let's do video surveillance, okay, y'all? Big, big video surveillance fan, okay? Get those, get those uh, lurkers creeping around our property off our property. Oh yeah, David E's talking about how um, the developers of Threat Gen Red versus Blue are constantly adding new features, new functionality, tuning the game. It changes um, from uh, deployment to deployment. So if you have played it in the past, believe this, it has changed since you last played it. Now new vulnerabilities can be discovered just like it is in real life. We've installed our perimeter firewall and we have our SIM in place, which frees up one of our assets. We can use the action log to see what we've completed and what is still pending. So you'll see really quickly that we have one of three assets available. So two people still working and they are committed to these two projects right here. Just like real life people. Real life, when you have a project like install video surveillance or even do an asset inventory, you gotta put people, process and technology to work. Here's our main firewall. We're gonna go ahead and drop log collection and analysis on it because we have that SIM we can start looking and pushing logs telemetry from that firewall just to see if any baddies are ringing our doorbell. Good to see you, Lane. No problem, my friend. Oh, Jack Scott doesn't have the iHeart Nest. I'm sorry, Jack. We'll have to get you sorted out there. All right. So we've completed our asset inventory and video surveillance. All right. So the emotes, Jacks, are for squad members. I'll have to figure out a way to get you squad access. Yes, yeah, so Alex Goodwin saying policies and procedure is a 2FA prereq. Agreed 100%. All right, so it still takes two resources, three turns to do that. We're not going to hire new staff. We've got our endpoint detection and analysis situation going on. I am going to do that just for my terminal server. Just again, because I feel like that's a X risk, right? As Alex likes to point out. Existential. Yeah. Because I don't want to deal with um, someone hacking in from, you know, overseas, as it were. We got our video surveillance system in. Clint, can you hear my sound effects? Oh, yeah. All right. Loud video surveillance is in. We will catch on. We will catch people. Oh yeah, Jax, if you're in the threat gen stream, that's why you don't see that one. That's that's the difference. I'm sorry. I knew you were a squad member, Jax. All right, here we go. So policies and procedures, another best practice when it comes to um, basically uh, information security. Now, as a defender, the name of this stream is Defend the House, right? I would argue, and this is not best practice, you will never read this in an academic text. But yes, policies and procedures are important, but dude, there is so much more other important stuff to get in place first. Multi-factor authentication, security awareness training, um, EDR, SecOps, like, yeah, you can do policies and procedures, but for the most part, your business is gonna operate just the same. Um, it's only when you're trying to make sure. And I would argue that, um, you know, when we created the game, we, we made policies and procedures a prerequisite for a lot of things. And that's not entirely true in real life. You don't absolutely have to have policies and procedures in place for a lot of these things. We were trying to enforce good behavior rather than reward you for good behavior. And I think moving forward in the future, we're probably going to be pulling off a lot of these prerequisites where we're enforcing you, you know, forcing you to do good behavior instead, let you learn by hanging yourself with enough rope. So uh, I think that's probably going to be a more realistic educational simulation doing it that way. I like it. I do like it. I will say to Clint's point though, having it required is not a bad idea. And I'll, this is another like lesson learned from reality that you would never read in a text and people be sec. If you're here, some, some, uh, regular industry professionals will agree with this. Let's just pretend for a second that this business doesn't like information security, right? So you're like, hey, we got to roll out 2FA. And the CIO is like, uh, no. Or the chief revenue officer is like, uh, no, we don't have time for that, right? So if you have a policy, then you have an enforcement. You have a stick where general counsel now gets involved. CEO gets involved. Um, compliance can get involved, right? So you can actually force um, behaviors on 
organizations that are a little reluctant to do it. So there is that kind of reality, I would argue. And I've come across a lot of organizations where they don't like information security or the cybersecurity uh, concept, the team or anything. And you, you come across a lot of that in, in the, the industrial sectors. I love it. Now, I don't normally do this, but I'm deploying USB security to the two engineering workstations. I did it here and I did it here. Um, it's possible that threat actors are going to come in and throw USB drives down and these two goons uh, are going to pick them up and plug them in. And it's just, it leads to too easy a victory for the red team uh, being able to control those HMIs just by throwing a USB drive in the in the parking lot. So I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to intervene that. James, you're late to the party. We literally just talked about that. Your question is, isn't best practice to have policies in place before implementing a tool such as MFA? And maybe maybe that, maybe you are part of the conversation. That's what spawned your question. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is a best practice to have policies and procedures in first, but um, they're not required mechanically, I guess you could say. Yeah. Well, and in real practice, James, yes, it is best practice. Every single text will say, yes, policy procedure is the first thing you should do because it defines what you're actually rolling out. But in, in real life, writing a policy that you're going to have 2FA or writing a policy that you're going to require complicated passwords is fine, but it doesn't actually change the technical infrastructure, the configuration of anything in your environment. It's not like as soon as the ink's dry, your environment gets risk reduction. So a lot of times organizations will, you know, smart organizations will roll out something like 2FA and get it in place and then retroactively um, document that it's a policy. Like they almost agree to it in writing, I mean, in, in verbally and then roll it out. Okay, so we've unlocked um, policies and procedures. Let's go ahead and do security awareness training. Um, I love that. Very important. And let's do, we've got NIDS in here. So let's do one more NIDS. Um, we'll do NIDS over here. So I do want to do uh, network segmentation soon, but I'm hoping to uh, trick the bad guys. So I've got uh, monitoring on my firewall. I've got monitoring on this DMZ. Uh, Carl and Kathy might be a problem if they walk into these areas and I've got my workstations with USB security. So we're, we're doing all right there. So Alex Goodwin says, why not secure the SCADA controller as well? All right. This guy right here, the SCADA PCS, is that what he's talking about? Um, Clint, the SCADA uh, controller, is this the SCADA controller? Yeah, the well, a controller. I would think would. I don't know what he's talking about. I think a controller would be a PLC. Uh, there's, 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 in this, in this case, the controller and the PLC are synonymous. The SCADA server, maybe he's calling that a controller, which could also uh, be considered a controller, and depending on your setup. Uh, All right. I'm, I'm thinking he means the SCADA server, the SCADA PCS. Yeah. Okay. So if that's the case, I saw this as like a server not something that uh, an end user would sit at with a USB drive and plug it in. If the game mechanics follows that methodology, then yes, I will deploy USB security on it. Um, I was under the impression based on the graphic, you know, in the diagram that this is not a, um, a machine that someone sits down and plugs into. No, and it's not, right? The SCADA, uh, but so, and just FYI for, um, and depending on your, your setup, your, uh, your, your control systems set up there there oftentimes is a difference between a controller and a plc a programmable logic controller uh and so it's a lot of times the, the controller and the the scada server uh can be synonymous or yeah so anyway i like it okay so we've got usb on this guy this guy this guy now we're going i want to start i'm doing network segmentation which is which is good and um I want to, I want to start doing vulnerability management and start finding those things. So we need to do ICS vendor. Uh, is it, this one is for, which one, hold on. This one is the one that allows us to scan it without knocking it over. Yes. So let's do this one. This is a, basically a prerequisite for our environment to make sure that we don't knock over, or blow something up over here, which would be absolutely the worst. <laughs> Here we go. All right, so that's still in practice. All of our resources are currently being used, no big deal. I wanna point out that 
our PL is still at 100%, which means that there's no, you know, we're not getting any data siphon, no ransomware, no indication of any problems. As far as our world is concerned, we are the best CISO. We are defending the house. Good job, everybody. Um, someone asked if we were following a methodology. I forget who did. Uh, Lane asked, is there a framework on this one? No, Lane, this is just Jerry, uh, 20 years of experience, hardcore CISOing. Uh, choosing the path and explaining my practice along the way. So we've completed safe testing methods. We've got uh, a little bit of extra security on this network segment. We got a, a, a firewall and some EDR up on this guy. We All right, can't I've, do. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead. I, I, I have a an unrelated comment to chat after this. All right, I'm going to harden ED, RDP just to further harden this thing. And we're going to get network segmentation next round. I want to start doing vulnerability assessment and hardening Carl and Kathy or put a VPN in. Again, I'm really focused right now on protecting the ICS network segmentation. Go ahead, Clint. All right. I see everybody talking about their drinks of choice uh, in chat. So here's a question that's very related to cybersecurity. There's a history to it. Uh, so Mountain Dew Code Red or big red and if you're not from the united states you probably don't know what big red is uh big red is actually specifically uh, an original texas drink so i've okay. never heard of big red so it must yeah be so big red is flavor wise very similar to iron brew those of you from the uk i like it okay so that's the question mountain dew code red or big red and i'll let you substitute big red for iron brew or uh, something like that, that if you're not in the United States. All right. You know, I'm not a big soda person. Code Red was always good. I'm not a big soda person, but I will tell you, I have a weakness for RC Cola. Thankfully, it's not easy to find, but I have a weakness <laughs> for RC Cola. Yeah, you can still get Big Red in Texas and a lot of places in the United States. But there, uh, I'll answer this question later at the end of the stream. Remind me, um, there is some trivia with the Mountain Dew uh, Code Red. So, There's actually a Netflix special on right now. It's a four-part series about when Pepsi tried to run the points program, kind of like Marlboro Miles or Camel Bucks back in the day. And they had a Harrier Jet that they joked around, you know, it was like t-shirt, 50 points, um, you know, a free Pepsi, 100 points, Harrier Jet, 7 million points. And some kid went and got the points and then demanded that his Harrier Jet and Pepsi took him, like, he took him to court and everything. It was a whole thing. It's a Netflix story. I think story. I remember that. I, I think I remember that, actually. But yeah, there's, uh, so there is some trivia and, 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 and I actually... I actually mentioned it in a, in a documentary that I did. I, I, I do video as a hobby. Um, but yeah, so if anybody can get it, what is what is the relationship between Mountain Dew Code Red and the Code Red virus? What are, what's, what is the relationship? See if you can answer that one in trivia. Uh, I don't even know if you can Google that one, but we'll see. All right, so uh, Lane says, didn't there was a Code Red virus, right? I, and I think it was named because the hacker was drinking it at the time. And then Casually Joseph's telling me that RC Cola is at Walmart. I did not know that. There's a Walmart. I could throw a rock and hit a Walmart from where I live. So I'll have to investigate that. Thank you, Joseph. If that's the case, get ready to see a plumper version of Jerry because I have a inherent flaw that allows me to just consume that without any care. All right, guys, so we have successfully put log collection analysis on our firewalls. We finished vulnerability assessment. So we wanna um, look for antivirus missing, okay? Antivirus, anti-malware, um, this is a, this is a um, standard process. Like you should have this. Running naked with a computer is not a good move. Uh, Kathy is a, high, a highly likely target to get hit. Uh, she may even be compromised at this point, so let's put EDR on her. Oh, system patching. Boy, oh boy. She's a hot mess on fire. Let's focus on um, antivirus. Where's my antivirus? Justin, uh, you asked what you your conference ran long, and you asked what did you miss. Um, Jerry did the um, the shovel, the truffle shuffle. 
uh, from, from the Goonies. He picked up his shirt and everything. Uh, so you missed that. Yeah, I needed I needed you guys to let me in. Let me in. So I'm installing antivirus everywhere. Just a general best practice. Uh, I'm going to focus on the end user endpoints because they're more likely to get compromised uh, through various means. Email phishing, spear phishing, USB. The NIDS device we do want to fix, but... We have $9,000, so we actually need to be mindful of our budget. Might have to be going to the... Um, all right, well, we just got $10,000. Thank you. Um, I do want to start working towards getting some more money, but let's let's take a look at what our workflow looks like right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish off putting antivirus in place and then look at an updating uh, antivirus just to see if my engineering workstations, which, guys, th these are two major problems right here that... Uh, we definitely need to address. In fact, I'm going to remove AV from my NIDs and fix AV on this guy. Okay. So now we're just bolstering our high value items. We have full asset inventory. We know where things are. We've got a SIM in place with log collection analysis on our firewall. So we'll be able to see lateral movement. We've got NIDs in place in two of our zones that have a lot of end users. And the idea here is that if uh, end user Carl gets compromised, we'll have visibility into that. Oh, David E is not happy about AV before 2FA. I would agree. I would agree. 2FA is, um, <laughs> we should get some 2FA going. I'm a huge 2FA fan. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in place right now. Drop in the 2FA and then enforcing strong passwords as well. Enforcing strong passwords. This is another one that is like, you don't need a policy to do this one. You should never deploy tech that has default credentials on it. Never, 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 never. That is a horrible practice. So we're going to go ahead and address that. Also, I need to start thinking about getting budget. I know I got 10 grand um, the other day for being pretty good at what my job is, but we are running out of resources. So we need to uh, request budget, get that in the pipeline. So I noticed somebody just signed up. Um... Uh, thank you. But uh, I do want to mention, uh, I'm going to do this now because um, I don't want anybody else to miss out. But um, you can get 40% off. So it's very important. This week through the 16th, it's for businesses. You get 40% off any of the business subscriptions or packages. Um, on the 17th through the rest of the month is your individuals. So if you're an individual, you want to sign up if you want to get 40 percent off wait until the 17th so just throwing that out there use code threat gen holiday at checkout awesome thank you uh everybody thanks clinton for that and uh good to see a haircut fish okay guys we got a problem we got a problem in in uh oz here ransomware infection our mail servers down not good not good mm. Uh, and our our resources are all booked up. So, oh my God! So if I request budget, if I activate IR, can you get budget while you're in incident response? I mean, I feel like that's even a more compelling reason to give. <laughs> yeah, if it resolves after the IR resolves, it will cancel out. All right. So I have one turn. Okay, so let's do this. We're gonna give it a shot here. We're going to activate IR because our mail server is important. You can see we're already, our PL is already down. That's not good. Because I'd have to wait two turns, oh, technically. Wait. Am I wrong? Al Alex, you can get budget while you're in IR, I guess. Oh, okay. Maybe okay, good. I, okay. I David's agreeing. You can activate IR. Okay. I forgot the rule on that. All right. James Driscoll saying having an email down is great because Carl doesn't get spam. I love it. <laughs> All right, social security. Um, you now have maximum defense against social engineering. Nice job, everybody. That was the completion of our two-factor auth and, and strong passwords. We're requesting budget right now. Uh, because we're going to be requesting budget, I'm going to go ahead and just replace this asset and feel good about it. That's going to take one turn to resolve, and then I'm going to deactivate IR. So this is one game mechanic uh, that you guys should know about. Um... This will resolve in the order of the queue. So top, uh, for, um, first in, first out, right? So it, it, it builds it as a stack. 
So replacing the asset will happen and then deactivating IR will occur. That way you if, don't waste a turn, right? If you are a fan of trading card games like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, whatever, same concept. Yep. Here we go. The PL is quickly dropping, which is not good. Asset replaced, budget acquired. Ooh. We are we're feeling good. We're feeling good. Okay. So now obviously there's some issues in this environment down here. So now I want to start hardening hardening everything down here getting some visibility up in here um i mean really we should look at the uh oh my gosh um i'm gonna update av all right so let's go ahead and end the turn now i'm doing this because there was an infection in this network segment so i don't know if we got rid of the threat actor okay like i don't know if we're safe i don't know if they're still lurking all i know is we replaced the email server that's it so you gotta you gotta keep in mind they could still be in there. Yep. Yeah, and you don't know if that was due if it was due to say a phishing email or something like that, and that mm -hmm. was their if they didn't if they hadn't moved laterally yet, that could have quite possibly gotten rid of them. But gotta get that monitoring going. Yep, exactly. So I'm 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 going hard on the monitoring up in here. Or the at this point, you know, you might want to start your threat hunting, start trying to track them down. Uh, but you got to have the right skills for that. And oh, PNL drops to seventy five percent. Nice. I mean, that's not good. We don't like that. But I do appreciate the uh, notification here to let us know that. It's good to know. That's a new. That's a new feature. I like that. So you can see right here. So as far as doing threat hunting, we have to actually spend three turns and three people. So we're gonna go dark for a minute here, which is not great. Oh, change default creds. Holy crumb. That's not good. Um, hmm. I thought enforcing strong passwords allowed, I guess that just allows us to change this. Hmm. All right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go YOLO here and get over to threat hunting because I wanna be able to maximize my time when I am in IR still doing things, which is what I can do in IR is threat hunting. So wish us luck, y'all. Wish us luck. Good time to ask any weak AV volumes left. There's a couple um, AV that need to be updated. We got a ransomware infection. This is not good. Okay, it's just Picard. Now, here is another kind of unbelievable reality, okay? Just because this dude's computer got ransomware, it's a single one. It's not good. But I am doing something that's going to require a couple turns to resolve. If I pull my people off to go address Picard's computer... Um, if I, if I pull him off, we're not going to get this and it's going to be a waste of all my resources. So I'm not going to go into IR. Wish me luck, y'all. Now, some of you might be thinking, you are so dumb. You are really dumb. <laughs> For real. And that would be a fair assessment. That would be fair. This is definitely not a best practice, but given my reality, I'm willing, I'm willing to do this. Um, Cybersecurity cert is good. Well, hold on, David. I want to get I want to get to threat hunting. That's the thing. I want to I want to be able to threat hunt when I'm in IR. So it's gonna take one more turn. Oh, I can just do threat hunting now. Oh, I thought that was a skill I had to learn. Okay, cool. Well, then let's do this. Let's change Stay default. Stay on target. Cards. Stay on target. I know. Hold on. It doesn't cost anything to activate um, IR, right? Cred. doesn't oh. take it it doesn't take a turn right yeah i mean a resource so let me change default creds really quickly where are my default creds there we go all right so there's a bunch here let's go ahead and they're operating in this environment this environment and this guy and activate ir again the order is stacked we can now do thread hunting we're about to get bananas up in here Let's see. Password policy created. Very good. Cybersecurity cert. Very good. All right. So now we're officially in IR. We can begin looking at this. Now we can disconnect him from the network because this isn't a high value asset. This is just some, you know, guy in accounting. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to, oh, we can't do forensics on this box. What, what skill do I need to be able to do forensics? 
Um, you should. I'm not do sure need... why you're not able to do friends. Is it IR code. procedures I need? Chat. What is it? Scroll over to the your far right. Any thoughts, chat, on why I can't? Yeah, do... I'm not. I'm not even. Oh wait, you know it's in your incident response. And gather forensics. Yeah, it's purpled out. I'm not sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, this yeah, is... you haven't detected the compromise. That's right. You, you, Interesting. Okay. Can I do this? Can I crack the ransomware key? It doesn't show up as an option, but it is, it, it's down here. I've never played that skill before. I mean, that turn or that thing. You, you can try to crack it. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, I guess because it's not a targeted... Um, it, it's not considered a targeted action. That's why it's not showing up on the asset itself. Um, oh, he's saying but, I got to threat hunt it. Yeah. Yeah, that's and then, so um, whoever said that. Yeah, D David is correct. So you have the ransomware, but you haven't gathered knowledge of the infection of the threat. So you can't gather forensics until you understand the compromise. Mm. Okay. How are these guys getting in? I'm kind of curious. Let me let's look at this threat hunt on that okay so we're doing some threat hunting we're disconnecting picard might might try to go for a um cue another budget request huh okay that's a pretty hardcore move but let's do it Dude, staff is so <laughs> david the crack ransomware is the best action in the game <laughs> yeah i like it um i think he's being facetious Okay, so we're going to go ahead and gather forensics on this thing. And cleaning the asset doesn't fix the ransomware, unfortunately. But we're going to continue to threat hunt. We threat hunted uh, the server firewall, this and this, and didn't find anything. I'm going to do this box down here because this was also compromised earlier. Threat hunting completed. Good. This, this guy is still, um, we're still gathering forensics, which is fine. We're still requesting budget, which is fine. I'm just going to do threat hunting on the rest of the assets in the immediate vicinity of this compromised asset. This is something that you would, I mean, you wouldn't really do threat hunt. Well, you could. When there's a compromise like this, you'd want to make sure that there was no contagion. There was no reach by other, um, like east-west movement of the threat actor to get other devices. We've collected forensics evidence. You can see we've gotten threat intelligence score 20%. We have another um, box compromised right now, which is not good. Let's go ahead and gather forensics. Now, Clint, the only way to fix this is to replace the asset, right? You, um, Yeah, so you can clean the box to get rid of the compromise, but that doesn't get rid of the ransomware. And then to get rid of the ransomware, you either have to replace the asset, restore from backup, uh, if you have a restore point, uh, pay the uh, ransom or uh, crack the ransomware key. Which is the hardest thing to do in the game, probably. So Alex is saying you need to spin out the compromise until the turn before the budget resolves. I don't know what that means, honestly. Um, so the, the budget's going to resolve next turn. We've got two uh, issues going on here. We're I am going to replace Picard, okay? And we're gathering forensics on uh, Yama Yamamoto really quickly. Again, I'm trying to... Let's hope we get some budget here. How much is the ransom? Do we know? Um, it, it, so the ransom doesn't actually have a cost to your cybersecurity budget. What it does, it takes a huge P&L hit um, or gives you a huge P&L hit because it comes out of company budget or insurance mm -hmm. or whatever, not your cybersecurity budget. So it just gives you a massive P&L hit. I see. And these devices do not have... Um... And it gives the red team another an additional resource, by the way. Okay. Let's check threat hunting on... The... Oh, okay. All right, let's, let's keep working on this, guys. Should have bought insurance. Ransom's $10 billion. That's funny. So we threat hunting complete. We haven't found anything yet. Um, but this is okay. A P&L is going down. We need to... Uh, clean this asset. Do we get? We did get some forensics from Yamamoto's box, so that's okay. Let's go ahead and replace the asset. No big deal. 
and we'll do a little bit more threat hunting on uh we've done all of these devices i don't think we've done the nids but i don't really want to do that um let's check these devices you know, maybe this is a good time to uh, to mention, you know, with all the cybersecurity going on and uh, the need for staff and all this, um, or maybe he needs to replace some of his staff. Uh, if um, if you are a hiring manager, I'm telling you right now, your hiring practices are probably broken. And I'll be talking with Simon Linstead in, um, this afternoon on InfoSec Live about hiring practices, broken hiring practices, and how to fix them. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, drop a link in chat, uh, Clint. All right, so we're going to do this, thread hunt on a bunch of stuff, replace the asset, then get back to work because um, we are we are losing money fast, and that's not good. All right, P&L has dropped to 50, not good. All right, so we are back in full production mode. We need to make some money, like now. Um, looking at my tree here. Trying to figure out how we've been compromised in two different areas. VPN's uh, not a bad option. We don't have a lot of remote workers, but... Um, I'm afraid of the backup process, honestly. Let's see. What would I do? I really need EDR is what I need, honestly. So let's do EDR on these boxes. And hope... You think I, maybe add a new staff member too? I'm going to do it. What do you think? Sorry, I'm Wish me luck, all. I've never tried to hire a new staff. <laughs> open, open AI chat has crashed. Is that legit? Like, it's been brought down? Interesting. Clint, have you seen this open AI chat GPT? No. Oh my God, it's insane. All right, we got our new staff. We're good. We're good, y'all. So now we got four people. PL starting to creep back up. Um, let's look. So this has been our major area of issue over here. Let's go ahead and patch this um, firewall. That doesn't have any problems. That has a firmware problem. We could do hardening on this one. Actually, you know what? Let's do hardening on this one, too. I'm trying to clean up all the firewalls, guys. Harden that guy and put EDR on this guy. Oh, wait, we don't have a... All right, we're just tightening up our network devices. All right. Wow. Yeah, so Clint, open, open AI chat GPT. You can like type in anything and it'll answer it in like an unbelievable way. It's it's like bananas what's going on. It's You should check it out. It's what? Like, I, like, like I did it live on stream this morning. I asked it a question, like, um, like I asked it a question, like how, how, how would I become a SOC analyst in 2023 in, in 600 words? And it like within five seconds, it wrote a 600 word blog post. And then I posted it to my website and you can, you can go look at it. It's like an excellent blog post written in five seconds by, uh, AI. And what is it? I had to make, I, I, yeah, I made one modification because it said CEH and CISP were good um, options, but obviously that's not a good uh, option. So, t um, yeah, look at BSEC dropped it in, in links. Uh, uh, chat openai.com. Go check it out. You just type anything in the bottom, like, how do I get how do I get um, into cybersecurity with no experience? 600 words. That'll probably be a good one. All right, so let's keep rolling. Our PL starting to grow up, which is cool. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about ourselves. So we're just going to continue doing, um, I want to put VPN in place just to avoid Carl. Cause like I, I'm always talking to Carl about not doing dumb stuff and he's constantly Carl! always, always. All right. PNL dropped to 50% again. What the heck? Wow. That was a big drop guys. That went quickly. That went quickly. Let's put EDR on some of these high value assets and hope to goodness that we are not compromised. Actually, I don't want to do strong Wi-Fi. I feel like we've got decent. Um, what could what could they have? The file server? 
That was like a massive drop. Man, yeah, that's... Are you playing with that open AI chat thing? No, I, I'm talking about your massive drop there. I, I, I'm waiting to confirm my email for the chat. Oh, open ransomware AI. infection. We got our VPN, but ooh, this is why we're taking a massive hit. Okay. This what is, is why we're taking a massive hit. Okay. So we oh. need to... Um, we've got a... Yeah, we need to do a bunch of things here. We need to do a bunch of things that resolve right away and then activate IR. Okay. Wish us luck, y'all. Wish us luck. Alex Goodwin. All right, IR mode activated. We gotta get this thing cleaned instantly. Replace asset. We're not screwing around up in here, y'all. We're not screwing around up in here. Can I do threat hunting on this thing too? Is that a waste doing threat hunting on this device right now? I mean, if you wanna get forensics on it, you'll need to. Oh, I don't want to get forensics. I want to get it replaced. I'm like, yeah, replace it. yeah, yeah. You're getting close to the red zone. Oh my God. Okay. Let's go. And then deactivate IR. I got to get back to making money up in here, people. Dude, we're, we're actually, um, <laughs> we're running low on budget too. That $45,000 FTE. Threat hunting complete. Asset replaced. IR deactivated. We are creeping into the red. All right. So we need to... These things are all hardened. Well, that one's not. Um, is Car what's Carl up to? You know, they're hard, but there might be some zero days on them. True. Let's do this. Patch that. Um, update the firmware there. Implement strong Wi-Fi. That would only be like an in-person attack. What's this guy's problem? I will patch up here. Okay. Let's hope that we don't go in there. Straight cash, homie. All right. We got a full asset update. So your commitment. Just keep everything updated. It's impressive. No rest of the weary, though. Very nice. All right, so the PNL is starting to creep back up. That's good. Let's request more budget. See if we get that. I've been really going to the well a lot with these guys, so I'm not sure they're going to be super pumped. Um, let's harden this system. Harden this system. This NIDS is looking... Uh, hold on. I need a NIDS uh, right here. This is a problem. This whole space is a problem. Um, yep. All right. And then, okay. Let's end the turn. Yes. Casually Joseph saying that I, I, I went to too many uh, dinners on the business. Absolutely. All right. So we've got our NIDS device. Let's put log collection analysis on it. Um, I don't want to implement strong Wi-Fi. That seems like such a waste. All right. Um, let's go ahead and patch this guy. He was the first one impacted. Oh, cue an internal vuln assessment before the budget. Okay, you got it. All right, so... Yoink. We got an internal vulnerability assessment for 500 bucks. No big deal. That's going to take three turns. So let's let's do like quick little one-ones... Um, things that take one turn, change default creds. We'll change that. Good luck. Let's hope for some budget, y'all. Uh-oh. We failed on our budget request. I failed on our budget request. Uh, I'm going to try to go back to the well for budget request. Um, oh. they are not happy over in, in the executive office. They're like, um, bro, you asked for all this money. And now what are you, what are you doing with our money? All right, we're going to keep patching and the turn. Thank you, John Patine. Let's go blue. Yeah. Need some cash money. Need some cash money. So our action log budgets queued up internal vulnerability assessments queued up. We're just going to keep doing our little, uh, little patches, little fixes over here and user land and hope for the best. P and L is going back up. We're almost out of the orange and into the yellow. 
We completed our internal vulnerability assessment. Let's see what we found. Um, default creds on the VPN. PNL is, that... PNL is going back up though, so. Yeah, A antivirus updates. Um, engineering workstation, let's get some system patches over there. Let's end the turn. Tony Roy agrees. All right, so budget request. Uh, hold on, do I have a budget request going? Thought I had a budget request going, but let's do another budget request. Um, let's keep doing it. All right, I'm gonna start hardening these devices. Patch, patch. Uh, let's see. A lot of system hardening going on. Oh, install AV. Let's do that. No EDR in the engineering workstation. Is that is that right? That might be an oversight. Carl. Uh -oh. Carl. Yep. Yep. Carl. Hold on. Carl. Carl said he did it. Okay. Carl told me he did it. All right. Good thing Alex and David E work here too. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pass the turn. We're about to get back up into the yellow. Uh, we're at the yellow line right now. I'm just saying it is the holidays. Budget uh, bonus season's around the corner. I think if we get up into the yellow, we can make a pretty strong argument for our uh, our Christmas bonus. We could get our Jelly of the Month Club. Put log collection analysis on that. Carl was eating ice cream. That's right. We KV on the Skata server. Compromised asset detected. All right, so our VPN concentrator, this one had default creds. Um, our budget request failed again. So we've had three failed budget requests. I don't know what management wants. I don't know what management wants. Like, guys, you Leave them alone me. for a little while. You got to leave them alone yeah. for a little while. Let it let it cool down. Yeah. All right, so I'm not worried about this. p and still kind of going up. Um, I'm going to start putting... All right, let me let me look around for some EDR stuff. We've got EDR where we need it right now. Okay. Does Kathy have EDR? No. Oh, if you're, you know what? We would have won already. Uh, we forgot to put the turns at uh, 50. Oh, that's right. I don't think I had a choice in first player, a uh, single player, excuse me. Well, you could have put it in the settings. Oh. All yeah, right, in the, in the glo your global settings to start the game. Yep. I didn't even activate IR. Str okay, we got another compromised that. Oh no, that's the same compromise. So I, I, I'm I'm just straight yellow. Like let let the threat actor operate in there. You do you, boo. Here, let's do some. Uh... All right, we'll we'll activate IR. Let me do a whole bunch of one turn things here. Oh, default creds are uh, have been in place on the main firewall. Thank you. Thank you, um, vendor. Thank you, vendor. Donkey. That was a vendor-managed asset. All right. IR mode activated. I did not queue the budget. We will do that, though, because our outside consultant's advising it. All right, we're gonna gather forensics on this device. Yep, and we could clean the asset too, which is a uh, thousand bucks and the forensics will resolve first, which is good. And let's do some thread hunting on some of these other devices. That's gonna take two turns. Let's keep an eye on it. Thread hunting completed. Didn't find anything. We need two more turns for this thing to resolve. We're gonna thread hunt here. Thread hunt here. Whoops. Guess we're not gonna thread hunt there. All right. That's an important asset though. That cost us a lot of money the other turn. So we're gonna go ahead and deactivate IR afterwards. So the idea is that we are uh, requesting budget. We're gathering forensics. We're cleaning an asset and then we'll be able to resume no big deal right afterwards when the IR deactivates. 
Here we go. Budget won't start that clean next turn. I'm not sure. Not sure. Alex and David are always uh, going to be ripping their hair out watching uh, misplays over here. But all right, we collected forensics evidence. Um, and our cleaning the asset failed, which totally stinks. Uh, so now mm. we have to... We're, we we jumped out of IR, so now I have to do a bunch of one-turn things um, to take advantage of my turn. I think maybe you can try to request budget now, but well, yeah. I have to, right? I mean... Yeah, yeah you have to. I have... It's going to resolve in one turn, Clint. Oh, there it is. Okay, yep. Sorry, yeah. I didn't see that. I'm not paying attention anymore. Uh, you lost me. Are you playing with the chat bot? No, no, not yet. What can I do for free? What can I do for free? Let's see, I guess. I'm gonna have the chat bot write all of uh, the new wiki text for the game. That's what I'm gonna do. Clint, this chat bot can write code too. Oh, wow. I did it on stream earlier today too. It wrote PowerShell in like perfect PowerShell. All right, here we go. I got zero dollars. Our budget failed again. Bro, if I go into IR, I can't even clean this asset, right? <laughs> if I go into IR, I can't, it costs money to clean assets, right? So I can't do anything yeah, free. Yeah, 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 you can't So what can do... I do for, th what can I do for free? <laughs> what do I get for $10? <laughs> All right, let me see. What did I, what did I threat hunt on? Um, Juniper Core, Juniper, um, the DMZ wire. Okay. All right, let's, let's, uh, wish us luck, people. Thread hunt. Thread hunt. Uh, thread hunt. I've got no money. Give me some money. Uh oh, new compromised asset detected. Uh oh. Uh oh, the DMZ firewall is pwned. Uh oh. Why can't I request budget, guy? Oh, because I'm in the middle of requesting budget. Yeah, yeah. Um,. I mean, if we don't get budget at this point and, and, and we lose, I'm going to consider that a management fail. Thank you. I agree. I agree 100%. <laughs> also, my, my NIDS isn't doing uh, very good uh, work. Yeah. Fire right. the CEO. Let's get rid of this and then let's, let's do threat hunting on that. Replace the board. All right, hold on. So I can get... I'm going to try to go into IR um, next turn so it resolves while the budget resolves too. <laughs> All right, here we go. Threat hunting completed. Threat hunting completed. Compromi um. All right, so we're not finding anything. I'm going to go ahead and do more threat hunting because it's free. And I'm going to activate IR and hope that budget hits. Let's roll, roll the 20 sided die guys. We are in trouble. Let's go. I don't think we got budget. Oh, oh yep. So I can't do anything except disconnect it from the network, which is not, my PNL is still doing all right. I'm just gonna thread hunt. I mean, there's nothing I can do. Can I request but I mean hold on, I have to request budget. All I can do is keep requesting budget. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I'm probably in a fight with the CIO and he's like, you know what? <laughs> Get rid of this sis out. You know, he bothers me. I'm not giving you money, my man. I think I think you're being set up. Classic Game of Thrones politics. Um, I, I am hosed right now. Here, I guess I'll just keep threat hunting. We're waiting for this budget request to resolve. Have some chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to hold off. You need to, instead of continuing to research, um, I mean, instead of continuing to request, you need to hold off a little bit. Didn't I give it one turn? 54 was my budget request, and then... Hold your load. Yeah, no, I did. I did wait one turn. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, did you? Yeah. Continuing to thread hunt. I 
I need money. I need money, y'all. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, we are getting paid. <laughs> All right. Still finding nothing in the environment. And our budget request failed. Don't requ yeah, don't request again right away. Wait a turn. All right. We're just going to live in IR. All right. So I'm just going to wait a couple turns. We are actively under attack, guys. Hey, so if I wait one turn, is that enough to reset the budget queue? Yeah, yeah under the current uh, current version. Yep, yeah. we will okay. be doing some updates. Like first, we'll be first of the year. We'll be doing some updates, and those updates will go to pro only. So just FYI, that, that'll be All right, here. Little, we go. Little thing we'll announce later. We got the budget in the queue. There we go. I'm I'm just literally threat hunting now on these things over and over again hoping yeah the steam version of the game will no longer be receiving any more feature updates until further notice we're probably going to wait until actually the next version of the game when i say version of the game like if we have one part two from here on out all the feature updates we'll still do bug fixes but the feature updates will only go to the pro version from here on out New mechanics, um, new actions. You got it. There you go. All right, here we go. Let's replace, replace. Actually, uh, I'll gather forensics. I mean, we've been we've been operating without uh, an issue for some time here, so we'll just keep rolling on that. We'll do threat hunting on Carl and Kathy. We'll give it two turns. I should have done replace asset on that VPN. All right, so, the, oh, did I just queue up forensics? Oh yeah, on the firewall, that's perfect, okay. And then let's clean the firewall. I should have done that, that's what I should have done. Messed up, but that's okay. Let's do threat hunting on this guy. This is gonna take another extra turn. We're getting close to the hour. Let's see. Great cash, homie. Thank you executives for the money, okay. So we're waiting for the, uh, the that to, to resolve. I'm gonna go ahead and deactivate IR because it will resolve after this uh, cleaning asset uh, activity happens. And let's continue doing uh, threat hunting. There we go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Asset clean, very nice. Let's, we're back in business, baby. All right, we got 60%. Um, let's go ahead and look at install we don't have av issues change default creds just this guy down here so that'll resolve that uh system patches this guy down oh wait i can't do that actually because i will knock these things over we have to do vendor certification very nice let's do that and let's look at some of our key assets that have been getting hammered and make sure that they are not um, an issue. Do some system hardening on that. And what do we got here? Threat hunting. What is this? Zero day? Weak password? Weak password? I thought I did um, enforce strong passwords. How can they have weak passwords? You have to do it again. They can pop up um, it, if. Um... Well, that sucks. It's on a, is it on a newly installed asset or? Uh, I don't no. know. No, either way, but they, they can they can pop up again as you do vulnerability assessments and you have to redo your, uh, reinforce them if you will. I like it. Clint, I, I'm gonna keep playing if you have some things you wanna drop. Uh, oh, we got a ransomware infection. O'Neill's up here, no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and activate IR after I install an EDR on that guy. There you go. Yeah, so yeah, if you want to play out your ring remaining turns, I know uh, we're in it. We're at the end of the hour here, so I'll just mention real quick the answer to the the trivia. The code red uh, is that yes. On uh, the first part of it is that the developers, um, I'm sorry, the researchers were drinking Mountain Dew Code Red when they discovered the virus, so they named it Code Red. However, um, 
the second part of the trivia is the Mountain Dew actually sent the developers a huge supply of Code Red um, in response to that. And the the researchers then subsequently said they should have named it Jack Daniels virus or something like ah. that. <laughs> so, um, so that was uh, the full part of that trivia there. And uh, so the remain the streams for the remain the remainder of the year so next uh on the the 14th i'll be doing a stream uh, i'm sorry the 14th will um we'll have a special stream it's going to be a retrospective year in review red versus blue with the developers and ama so developer aaron shabib and myself uh, the, we're the creators of Red versus Blue. We'll be doing sort of a retrospective year in review and AMA uh, next week. And then on the 21st, which is the final, that will be the final stream of the year. We won't be doing one on the 28th. Um, I'll be preparing for a hangover for New Year's. <clears throat> um, and so on the 21st, though, will be the last stream of the year. Jerry and I will be having a special stream that will be the last stream of the year. Will be do we, want, do we want to go ahead and announce what the name of that one is? Do you already have it, Jerry? I do not. I do not have it. Well, I'll go ahead and you want me to you want to spoil it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a good tease. Oh yeah. Shit. So we'll be hacking the oh yeah. Oh this could be it though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, keep we'll be, going. We'll be hacking the North Pole. Yeah, uh, we're gonna have a special level, a manufacturing plant, which is the elves workshop, Santa's workshop, and we'll be basically hacking Santa's workshop and the North Pole. So that's what we're doing the last stream um, of the year there. And finally, just wanna remind everybody that you can get 40% off by using code Threadgen Holiday, but it's in two parts. So right now we're running the sale, use Threadgen uh, Holiday code for 40% off of the business subscriptions and tabletop exercise subscriptions. However, if you're an individual and you want it, starting on the 17th, the same code, 40% off using Threadgen Holiday, shifts to the individual pro for lifetime or uh, subscription. So just wanted to throw that out there. And that's it. I love it. Hey, so we're at turn 75. I am gathering forensics and disconnecting this asset, which would have probably pushed us up past 100%. Oh, oh and you lost my because God. he damaged it the last turn. Bro, oh. bro, chop. That's oh. nonsense, son. I was disconnecting that sucker post haste. Oh, last Damn. turn. Gosh, dang. That was rough, bro. That was rough. Look at look at me. Oh. 170,000 plus starting cash. Six budget requests failed. That's a lot of time wasted. Um 40,000 on incidents, 98% staff utilization. Um, I do, yeah, I'll show Sorry, we had now. somebody asking for the code again. Threat gen holiday, all right. Yeah, so they had quite a quite a visibility. Um, they had that engineering workstation. They had, um, what was their skill tree? Oh, we can't see their skill tree. They had major vulns on all of our switches, all of our hardware. I'm kind of curious. Um, I'm kind of curious how they initially got in. Oh, electronic SC. Malicious USB drive successfully. They came. They did physical recon. Um, they did a social media campaign successfully. That's how they got on the mail server. Um, they did another malicious USB. I don't know what box they c captured, which stinks. The Picard box is what they got with the USB drive. Um, dang. Yeah. So you don't see it often. You don't see it often when the red team wins on turn 75. I thought for sure I had it. I thought I had the win, uh, just nice. narrowly missed it, but all in all, a very, very good stream. Yeah. And I don't think that was an off by one error. That's just, it, it, it was just the way the stack happened. I don't know. I'll let David said it was off by one error. I'll let Aaron make the call on that one. So but yeah, that was I, a good I, well, team. Great ending. I love it. Well, the, and the question was, how did the engineering workstation get compromised? Uh, let's take a look. Um, hold on one second. Going way up here. Way up here. All right. So, R. O'Neill, R. O'Neill. Did they have the engineering workstation for a while? Like... Oh, no way. 
It doesn't make any sense because I had, wow, password attack on an engineering workstation on turn 58. But it failed. Oh, but it failed. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Um, so um, let's see. Where's that engineering workstation? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is this like a Jerry um, configuration where it just magically attacks me? No, no, no. What? I don't get it. I don't see. I see multiple password attacks, but I don't see any successful compromise. I would like... I want to, I want judges on this one. Judges? Hey, save the report. Save the report. I w click, click, yeah. on save, yeah, uh, click on save the report and then uh, send it to myself, Aaron, and Greg. Okay. Because I'm curious. I, I, I'm curious how it happened too, but to be continued. Yeah. You know, there is a, there is a rumor. Um, oh, turn 70 spear fishing uh, we're seeing in chat. Turn 70 spear fishing. Let's see. Spear fishing attack. Okay. Oh, it does not yeah. tell you what. Yeah. Cause it doesn't tell you exactly what hit it. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's doo doo because I had, um, that's doo doo. <laughs> I had two F. I mean, I had uh, awareness training, advanced awareness training. I had uh, EDR. Well, I mean, I had EDR, but like, but I, yeah, number one, it, it it doesn't completely eliminate it. There's still a small percentage, and if the AI had electronic social engineering research pegged, then it's possible that they got they got lucky. I mean, it was a lucky strike. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Anissa Redman off to study. Alex Goodwin, um, David E. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, Aaron should be pointing out low chance doesn't equal no chance. Of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it guys. Thank you all for spending the last hour with us. Remember every Wednesday at 1130 AM, we are here playing threat gen red versus blue. It's never the same game. It's never the same stream. As you can see, even the, you know, you, you want to talk about lesson learned cybersecurity is a practice of vigilance. And if you let your guard down for a minute, you get punched in the mouth. And that's just what happened today. I thought I was going to a holiday party and instead I'm looking for a new job. <laughs> Yep. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time.